Lifting Up Jesus, Opening His Word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here live via Skype with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, one of the believers, had the question on why you think Jesus will return via Basra based on Isaiah 63, verse 1. The basis of that is not Isaiah 63, verse 1, although Isaiah 63 is a reference to it. The Lord's feet will definitely descend on the Mount of Olives. That's where he will terrestrially appear. But he first appears in the sky. Same as he went, he's going to come back. He left the earth, went to the sky, come from the sky, set feet on the earth. This is what the angels tell us in Acts chapter 1. But the basis is rather Isaiah 16, not Isaiah 63. Look with me, please, to Isaiah 16. Send the tribute land to the ruler of the land from Sela. Sela is the area of Petra. It's Petra, rock, stone. By way of the wilderness to the mountain of the daughter of Zion. Then, like fleeing birds or scattered nestlings, the daughter of Moab will be at the fords of the Arnon. Give us advice. Make a decision. Cast your shadow like night at high noon. Hide the outcast. Do not betray the fugitive. Let the outcasts of Moab stay with you. Be a hiding place to them from the destroyer. For the extortioner has come to an end. Destruction has ceased. Oppressors have completely disappeared from the land. A throne will even be established in loving kindness. And a judge will sit on it in faithfulness in the tent of David. Moreover, he will seek justice and be prompt in righteousness. It is the Messiah, the Messiah alone, who would sit on the throne of David and establish justice and righteousness. The Messiah alone. This was the last question in Acts chapter 1 again when the ascension happened. They're asking Jesus, is it at this time you will restore the kingdom? Same reference, on the throne of David. It has long been believed very ancient traditions based on Isaiah 16 and certain other passages that the Jews will flee Antichrist from Jerusalem. Antichrist here is the extortioner. Uh, he's trying to destroy them. Now, he will make a treaty, a covenant, and use this as a form of extortion, we're told in the book of Daniel. Daniel also tells us that portions of the land of Moab, of Moab, southern Jordan, will not be given into the domain of Antichrist, at least not fully. It'll be exempt, because it'll be a place of refuge, going by Mount Sair to Petra. So the basis is here. The one would come to Sela, to Petra, identified with the Lamb, and he would reign from the throne of David. That's the basis. Now what's very curious here is the reference to Amos 8 and to Luke 23 and verse 3. Cast your shadow like night at high noon. Remember, it got dark at noon when Yeshua, when Jesus was crucified. And we see this prophecy of the book of Daniel, of book of Amos, sorry, chapter 8, being fulfilled in Luke 23. Somehow, there's an eschatological counterpart of that with the return of Jesus in the book of Isaiah 16. So the basis is Isaiah 16. The basis is not Isaiah 63. But when we look at Isaiah 63, in light of Isaiah 16, who is this who comes from Edom, with garments of glowing color from Basra, the one who's majestic in his apparel, marching in the greatness of strength? 
It is I who speak in righteousness, mighty to save. He's the Savior. Why is your apparel red? As in Revelation, it's white, but there's dipped in blood. And your garments like the one who treads in the winepress. I have trodden the winepress, trow alone. And from the peoples, there was no man with me. I also trod them in my anger and trampled them in my wrath. And their lifeblood is sprinkled on my garments. And I stained all my raiment. For the day of vengeance was in my heart. And my year of redemption has come. Notice does the year of redemption and the day of vengeance concur. This is speaking primarily about the salvation of Israel. I looked and there was no one to help me. I was astonished. There was no one to uphold. So my own arm brought salvation to me. And my wrath upheld me. The right arm of Jehovah, the Yad, the right Yad, the right hand or the right arm of Jehovah, the same word in Hebrew, is always a figure of the Messiah. Jesus rules with the right hand of the Father. Yahweh brings salvation by his right hand. And I trod down the peoples in my anger and made them drunk in my wrath, and I poured out their lifeblood on the earth. This is the Haron Yah, the wrath of God. The faithful church is not here then. We are not appointed to wrath. This is the time of wrath. It is not the time of the church. This is God now dealing with Israel and with the nations. The church, the faithful church, is gone by this point. The Lord returns, and the descriptions you see in Isaiah 63 match in acute detail, accurately, the descriptions of the Lord with the white raiment and the blood from the wine press that we see in the book of Revelation. You put them together. It must begin at Basra, to where the Jews are going to flee, as, as has been long believed, to Petra. Uh, but the throne of David will be in Jerusalem. He will reign from there. That is where he will establish his Messianic kingdom. He goes that direction. So the Jews flee from Jerusalem to Basra. When the Lord returns, he comes in the air via Basra, Mount Sa'ir, to Jerusalem. Now, it's geographically, as a, as a bird would fly, it's really not all that far. It's really not all that great of a distance. It would have been a great distance in the ancient world because of the desert terrain and so forth. It would be the area around the Dead Sea and the lack of water and so forth. That's what would have made it a, a, a difficult journey. But the airborne distance itself was quite short. I trust this answers the question. Thank you so much.